Hi everyone, welcome to our application Starbucks. It's a multi-tenant application built for the hackathon of subject CMP 281. So let's have a demo first. We have two stores in this application which are two tenants. So I, like I said, it's a multi-tenant application. So let's test for them. So I have San Jose and I have San Francisco. So let's pick up San Francisco. You have option to dine in or take out. So let's take it take out and then I can add quantity it's like I have uh, one quantity I would like a latte and whole size small I can even add items over here like you can see so maybe I'll have two cappuccinos and then I'll order this generates an order ID and to check whether the back end which is a Ma Mongo DB is working correctly let's go to the MongoDB. So we'll see this is Azad's one of my teammates MongoDB and we can see that it's a SF location. So let's check. So let's see what's the outcome. See so the uh, order has been the status is placed. We have one small latte and two cappuccinos and the details are there. Let's see what happens is when we go back. If I want to, I have an option to update my order and I also have an option to cancel it. So I like to update my order to Mocha. Let's do an update. Let's again check over here. So my order has been updated to Mocha. What if I want to cancel an order? So what happens then? Once I do a cancel, the entire order has been deleted. See, no records found. Now let's try and place an order successfully without trying to cancel out our order. The order has been placed. We'll check again. Yes, it is placed. And now let's make a payment. So as soon as we make a payment, our status changed to this. We can refresh for the status and you can see it's being prepared. We have three threads running as soon as the order is placed, which tells uh, whether it's preparing. And it changes in every five seconds and 10 seconds, how, whether it's served or collected. So since it's a takeout, served would be our final status. So our application is uh, deployed in Elastic Beanstalk and we can see that it's very well communicating to the right backend uh, using Kong API. So we'll come to the Kong API later. Let's try and place a new order and check how our San Jose store is doing. So let's play is an order in San Jose store. So let's do a dine in over here and Since I'm dining in, I'm just thinking I have a company. Let's check our DB for this. So this is a San Francisco DB. Let's go to our DB, which is uh, which is the second tenant done by my teammate Koa. This is built in Golang, the second application, and the backend again is MongoDB. So we see that we have our order placed and payment is expected, the status is there. So we'll make the payment. So it's preparing now. We can refresh and see the status, what's happening to our drink. And you see that it has been served. So this is how our application works. So you can, uh, it's been done uh, by Team 3 Idiots. And why we named it so, it's the way there's a story behind it, which we thought we'll share in the demo. So there's 
this famous movie which tells about it's more important to learn the concepts uh, than just getting the marks so here we go to the underlying concepts and how is the architecture so we see that the portal has been built uh, deployed on elastic beanstalk we have four different kind of vpc the elastic beanstalk communicates to our kong api which has a which is a three node cassandra cluster and then the uh, kong api communicates to the right a store which is like a san jose store or a san francisco store the san jose store has been built in uh, language go lang and it has mongo db as a back end whereas the san francisco store is built in java application and has again mongo db as back end both of them has been deployed using uh, ecs instances and have the auto scaling properties hello everyone a professor this is kwa and I will explain my backend in Golang and Mongo. Um, I have here the six API and uh, with different uh, place handlers. Um, in the place handler, uh, the receiver I have here will be an order control which will hold a section of Mongo. And uh, the functions of for each handler will be wrapped by a uh, order error handler so basically uh, in the functions over here I will have the logic desire for each API and then it will return and come down to the error handler and for here I do nothing but just return the error if there's any error occur uh, at the end of the payment I also have a barista control which I will return an order uh, go routines that we change the status of order the status of, of order for like after 5 seconds the status will be preparing after 20 seconds will be served and after 10 seconds uh, the status will be collected to be able to uh, receive and store the data into uh, Mongo I have to have um, the structure of order and item over here but it's really convenient that I can declare the, the, the JSONs and BSONs which is used for uh, the Mongo so uh, it will do the mapping automatically thank you for listening hello everyone I'm Azad here and I'll be explaining my backend which I have developed in Java and uh, the backend which I have used is MongoDB the I have basically used uh, professor's code and modified it to uh, connect it to MongoDB and uh, I have removed the classes and everything so that uh, I don't use the classes to convert uh, to serialize and deserialize while getting it to the server so let's go through the code so here I have Starbucks server which uh, uh, routes all the requests to different classes and for, let's go to the first class the order resource class here we have the get get order and then uh, post order then put order and delete order so here uh, when, when the user calls uh, for any for any order all the get get operations post operations are done through here okay and uh, uh, here we have uh, all the if uh, if the user wants to get all the orders uh, the orders resource uh, is called and we have a payment resource wherein we have just one post request uh, post action which is used to submit the payment once once the payment is submitted uh, i start a thread which uh, basically changes the uh, status of the order so this is the thread which I run so uh, when when the thread starts the thread uh, starts at uh, preparing as the status and after that uh, it waits for 10 seconds and change it to served and again it's uh, sleeps for 10 seconds and the status is changed to collected so this is my backend thank you for watching so let's look at the Kong API, how we have configured the Kong API. 
So for Kong API, what we have done, it's like we have created three Cassandra nodes. We can see Cas1, Cas2, Cas3, and the main Kong EC2 instance. So once you have created the instance, you just log in into them. And because you'll be having four screens and you'll be logging, I would suggest that it's very important that you create a banner. So how you can do it by you get into the bash profile and so that whenever you run it, you can know it's like which node you are entered into. You should install Docker instance, uh, Docker application in both of them and start Docker. Once you have done so, so for communicating the uh, Cassandra applications, what you have to do is to you have to provide the seed. So using these simple steps, you can do so. For second node, you have to provide which is the seed. So you provide the IP of the seed. So you can see IP of Cas1 is given in Cas2. And uh, similarly in node 3, you can see the IP of both the other nodes are provided. And then in Kong, you configure all three of the nodes. So you can see over here, IP of Cas1, Cas2 as Cas3. Cas1, Cas2, Cas3 are the name of my nodes. So you can check the status when you're logging into in and you will see a similar status, I'll show you. So you can see when I entered my bash profile, run my banner and I can see I'm into node one and when I executed the nodes tool status, I can see the status of all three nodes in the Cassandra cluster. Then is setting up Kong API using the Postman. So you have to configure your IP and then you have to tell the port and API port. You can simply follow the get steps to know how your cluster is behaving. And when you have verified, you can see in the node information, you can see all three information of the nodes. Adding Kong API is important. It's like we, I had to add since it's a team of three. So I had two tenants and we had to add two tenants. Uh, so each tenant was added with the name, URI and upstream URL. When I do a get in this, I see all my APIs available. So you can see both my APIs are there available in this so this is the application which tells you about how to do multi-tenancy uh, and how to redirect using kong to a portal seamlessly and hope you enjoyed the video and i uh, hope you learned something underlying concepts like we did using this video thank you